Alright, YouTube Rail. Not sure if anyone noticed the date switch, but the softball game was Friday night, and then I went to the local Legion to play 1-2, and the next morning was the IU Volleyball Serving Camp. So this session took place on Friday, June 9th. I don't have very many pictures of the session, because in the past when I went to play here, pre-vlogging over a year ago, and then maybe only a handful of times since, it's usually a $100 buy-in and a very quick session of getting drawn out on or bad beat. Andy went this night and told me that a couple of the big gamblers were going to be in playing. And that's when you want to go to these local games. Usually it's kind of nitty and you have to wait around and catch stuff and try to extract as much value as you can. It's not always easy until certain guys come into the game. And like sessions past, I actually went busto for negative $120 within the first hour. And Andy was getting ready to leave. He played to my right that night. I rebought him for another 140 because, you know, guys here buy in for 100 to 200 but they usually keep it toward the 100 side, so you don't want to look all flashy and whatnot. Although there are guys who will buy into this game and rebuy and get over a grand in. And just for the record, when me and Andy end up at the same table in these cash games, it's not too often. We try to go at different tables because actually playing against each other brings up some of the toughest decisions for each of us because we play each other so hard. Actually, one of my toughest opponents is always Andy. No soft playing, no colluding, splitting the profits 50-50, none of that. We go at each other, bluffing and with strong hands, slow playing strong hands, trying to get each other's stacks. That's no joke. So my first stack here was 120, and I went busto, bought in for 140, because it wasn't just 1-2 this night. It was 1-2-10. Big Gambler was straddling 10, and every other hand he got another kid to be straddling $10. So two guys were straddling 10 throughout the night. I started to build a good stack once it got down to five-handed. Andy left and some other people. At this point, we had the guy dealing, who wasn't playing anymore, seat one, who's tight and only gets it in good. He's just there to have a good time. The next guy is actually there to have a good time too, seat two, but he'll toss in his chips. He'll gamble at any means necessary, but it's usually flush draws and straight draws. Seat three was the big gambler. I think he was in for about 700 at the time. He would straddle his 10 and then almost always raise $25 pre-flop. Andy's empty seat and then me and then an empty seat of a guy who he just didn't, he wasn't on the lucky side of things that night. Two seats over is a guy who back when I used to play with him, he kind of went broke kind of early each night. But now I've noticed tonight he was putting in better value bets and better timed bluffs and just overall playing a lot better. And then seat nine was also empty. A guy I think took home $100 or so had already left. Now by this time I've already climbed out of my hole and built about a 500 stack either with some well-timed bluffs and there were a few well-timed hands. One time I had a nut flush versus seat two's flush that he just couldn't fold, got him all in. It's getting pretty late at this point and I get eight, nine and diamonds in the small blind. So the button is the gambler, he's straddling $10 and the big blind is the kid who's improved a lot. Pseudo connectors, I call the $10 straddle. The big blind calls the straddle and everyone else folded and it gets back around to the button and he checks instead of putting in his usual $25. I think he was stuck enough at this point that he was trying to get his money in better. The flop came 9-5 deuce rainbow. With my small pair that was top pair, I bet out half the pot. You guys know me. And the big blind threw an additional $25, raised me to 41 total. The button folded. Now at this point, I th I'm thinking he's trying something slick, but I don't think he has a pocket pair because he didn't raise pre-flop. So with my top pair, I call $25 more. The turn's the queen of diamonds. I check with the intention of calling his bet. I have now middle pair and a flush draw. But he bets out $75, which is like three quarter of the pot. That's a pretty big bet, but I do not believe he has a queen. I think ace king, ace queen, he would have raised pre-flop. So with my hand in my draw, I call $75. The river's the ace of spades. At this point, I chicken out and check. 
I just don't see anything that I'm beating calling me. I expect him to bet and me to fold. He tanks for a while, and he actually checks back. And I'm not one to take my time and see what anybody else has. I flip over my hand, show my pair of nines, and he looks disgruntled. He shows pocket eights. This is a situation where he did good with his raise and his bet. He just couldn't do the triple barrel on the river to try to get me out. He was very upset that he couldn't make that bet, couldn't pull the trigger. We take down a nice pot. So since this is like a local friendly game, I gave warning that my next under the gun, I was going to leave. It was 1230. I needed to get up at 6 a.m. to take the girls to the volleyball camp. So it gets all the way around to my under the gun and I have ace jack of clubs. The improved kid has the $10 straddle on in plus one. Now I show this hand because I'm conflicted. You're there to win. You're there to take everybody's money and build your bankroll. But if I were to win this hand, in the back of my mind, I'd have to play, you know, at least another round. I can't just get up and leave. I know a lot of people do win big pots and leave. I do feel bad doing that. I know that's not a the spirit a poker player should have. You shouldn't bother anybody. But that's just who I am. So that plays a little bit into this hand. The small blind folded and the big blind called $10, which once again, I'm surprised he didn't raise to $25. And I just called $10. I'm not looking to try to win a huge pot off of these guys at the very last hand. The flop is 8, 10, deuce, 2 spades. Here we go. Now he bets out $25. With everything I said before this hand, I'm still not going to fold top pair on the flop. So I call $25. Plus 1 folded, and the turns the 4 of hearts. This time he checked. I decide to bet $50, you know, doubling his flop bet, just to take it down right now. But he calls $50. And the river's the three of clubs. Now at this point, I'm thinking, I'm calling whatever he bets because I do not believe him. He either missed his spade flush or whiffed totally. There is the small chance he does have a five for the straight. There is the chance he has two pair because he played, he always plays any two cards super aggressively. So I'm staring him down while he's got his hand on his temple, vape pen in hand. He goes all in for 195, which is a pot size bet. Now at this point I'm, is where I'm really conflicted. I think I have him beat, and I also look down at my stack, pretty healthy. Do I want to put in another $200 on top pair when there is a straight possibility out there or his two pair possibility out there? All of those factors, his hand possibilities, and then I have to get up so early and I just need to leave the game now, I fold. He shows me a four. He did say, I knew you had that ace and I was trying to get you off of it. I don't know if he had two pair or if he did have the straight, but he did win this hand. We cash out a $320 profit in four hours. Vlog win streak, three in a row. Guys, as usual, I've been super busy. It's taken me longer than I want to edit my videos. But coming up are my three Cali vlogs. I cannot wait for you guys to see these three Cali vlogs. I'm going to try my best to edit them ASAP. Get one out next week, one out the week after, one out the week after, and then it's the vloggers game. Which, you know, my flight's booked, the room's free. Um, I still do not have a sponsor. I don't have to have a sponsor. I have my buy-in. I'm comfortable where I'm at. But if anyone knows anyone, a company that would like to sponsor me, you know, get some shout-outs in the next few vlogs. There are going to be some good ones. Maybe wear a shirt or a patch during the live stream. I'm game. Have them send me an email. Link below. Comment on here. Or message me on Twitter. At hello7027. As always, I appreciate you guys. I cannot wait to show you the Cali Vlogs. Let's go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up. Please subscribe if you're not subscribed. It's time for me to start rolling. Thank you. Thank you.